Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set the amperage on your stick welder. Now when you're starting out as a beginner, it's hard to know if the challenges that you're having are coming from your welding technique or the electrode you chose or whether it's because of your amperage setting. So I'm going to link down in the description below some videos about all those other aspects. However, to set your amperage, we're going to start out using a chart and then I'm going to show you an experiment that you can do to be able to dial it in uh, with practice and it'll make you a much better welder if you're able to determine your weld setting experimentally and then also to have an eye for whether you're running too high or too low of an amperage so that you can make those adjustments and really tune in your process as you learn their skills. So this is the chart that I put together and it has for a given electrode type and diameter what amperage range you would usually run. And then also I included what material thickness that electrode diameter would apply to. So go ahead and grab a screenshot of this so you can use it later. Um, however, recognize that these amperage ranges aren't absolute, right? And the thickness ranges as well. There are many situations where you might run outside of these. It's just meant to give you a good starting point. Now within these ranges, the things that will make a difference are one, your thickness of your material. So if you're welding thicker material, you'll be a little bit on the higher end of the range and thinner material will be on the lower end of the range. Also, if you're welding vertically or overhead, you're going to be a little bit lower than you otherwise would when you're welding flat on a bench. So keep those in mind as you pick your starting amperage range. One other reason to be able to dial in your settings experimentally is that a lot of us aren't running with calibrated machines. Now what I mean by calibrated machine is a machine where they come and uh, someone who's qualified to do this will connect it to a device and be able to tell that the setting that reads out on the machine is actually the output that you're getting. Now I have an amp meter here and I'm going to show you something that might be surprising with this little inexpensive stick welder that I have. Now this is a $100 stick welder. I really like it and you can get a nice weld out of it. However, in a review that I did a little while back, I got a bunch of comments, you know, coming back after that are like, hey, I think the settings are off on this and I tried it and I'm like, oh, you know what? They are. And I, I think it was actually a little bit different on 120 and 240 volts. So I decided to do a little test. And so I took this amp meter and hooked it up here to see what we're actually getting out of the machine. And so it's hooked up to 240 volts now and I'm running a 3 seconds of an inch, 7018, and I'll strike an arc. And the machine's set to 100 amps, you can see, but I'm getting about 120 amps, and this thing's running hot. Now, I'll unplug the machine and just plug it right into 120 volts. I didn't touch the knob at all. I just left the setting alone. It's still reading out 100 amps on the setting, and uh, I strike an arc, and you, see, you can see here it's running, you know, much more, uh, Reasonably, it's much more mild, definitely lower amperage, and you look at the meter here and it's reading in the 80s. Now, I don't know if that's because of the machine itself or it's because of some of the limitations of the electrical supply that I have available in my shop. I don't know. But either way, um, you're not getting the same thing out. Now, once you get it dialed in with a particular power supply, it seems to run really consistently. So you just need to tune it in experimentally. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to do that. So for this test today, I took some quarter inch plates and tack welded them to a 1 8 inch plate. And I'm going to use a 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeters 7018 electrode. And I'm going to start clear down at 50 amps and I'm going to run a number of welds at uh, increasing amperage clear up to 130 amps. So I'm starting way below the range that uh, I would run this rod at and going way above. And so you'll be able to see some of the differences as we go along and do that test. Okay, so I'm turning my machine down to 50 amps here for this first test. And I'm using a Miller Dynasty 200DX TIG welder because I think it has probably the most accurate reading of any of my machines. And here it's just a real mess. I can barely even keep the arc lit, right? So I'll strike an arc and then I'll hold it long for a second and go in to hold a tight arc and, you know, not, uh, not going well. This is painful to watch. It was even more painful to actually try to run. So this is an indication that you're running too low. If you can't go in and hold a tight arc, you might need to uh, turn your amperage up a little bit if you're seeing things like this. 
by the end here I got to where I'm holding you know just long enough of an arc to uh, maintain um, a bead but uh, it's not not very good so I'll turn it up to 70 here and see how that goes now in between each run I did cool the plates off with some water on the back side so that they'd be the same temperatures I got into it so that wouldn't be another variable now you can see this is running really well along the 1 8 inch plate and I go up here onto the quarter inch plate and so with this one I was able to strike an arc and I'm just holding that nice tight arc and that's going to give me a much better profile so you can see this is what it ought to look like when it's running pretty well for you so we're starting to get into the range of, of what will work now turning it up to 90 amps here this is a little bit uh, towards the upper range that I'd run this on the 1 8 inch plate but you can see it's still running pretty well and notice that I'm welding faster so that's another variable that plays into it is your your welding speed so if you're running a little higher amperage a lot of times you can get a good result um, at a lower or higher amperage just by varying your speed the only time that I, I've really found that you have to be like pinpointed right on an amperage is if you're welding an open root joint where you're trying to weld the backside uh, through through your plate full penetration. Here at 110 amps, this is running hot. As we go along here, you're starting to see just a little bit of spatter coming off of there, and um, you can see my travel speed has increased. I'm going even faster, but. Uh, it's it's sinking in here and definitely on the the higher end of things um, sort of towards the the upper limit of where uh, I, I think is reasonable to go now now just because uh, it's interesting I'm turning this up to 130 amps here which is hotter than I'd ever run one of these 330 seconds electrodes and it's uh, really just shooting sparks everywhere you can see I'm flying along here it's almost melting through the the plate because uh, it's burning back into the rod because um, it sends a lot of heat up into that small rod and uh, it keeps that arc long and I can't uh, can't keep that tight arc with that heat. Now just chipping off some of this slag, a lot of it fell off as I was uh, either peeled off or when I rinsed it. But we'll clean these welds off and take a look at them and uh, see, see what we can't uh, learn from this. Okay, let's take a minute and look at the results here to see what we can learn from this. Here at 50 amps, you can see it's just balled right up on top and you can look at the angle that the toe of the weld goes into the plate and that gives a reasonable indication of whether you're getting some penetration or not. And we have it coming almost 90 degrees down into the plate so we're probably not getting good penetration there. Also, uh, there's, it's intermittent. If you remember, I could hardly keep the arc lit. So definitely not hot enough there. At 70 amps, it's starting to look pretty good here on the 1 8 inch plate but it's still balled up on top a little bit of the quarter inch plate, but much better. Here at 90 amps, it ran pretty well on the 1 8 inch plate as well as the quarter inch plate. Uh, besides, I got a little bit uh, off to the side there around the camera, but either way, not a, not a bad bead uh, profile as far as settings go. As we get up to 110 amps, it's running pretty well here on the 1 8 plate and the quarter, but it's definitely on the high side, and I was starting to get a little bit of spatter out. So that's one thing you can look for is spatter, or the little sparks and BBs ejecting out of the weld pool uh, are an indication that you're running too hot. Another thing that might be a little difficult to see, but I'll point out, is you have some undercut. And what undercut is, is where right at the toe of the weld, where it goes into your plate, it sinks down beneath the surface and that's a telltale sign a lot of times that you're running too high of an amperage because the speed that you're traveling at in order to maintain the right size bead does not allow you to fill the um, area out that you're melting out of the base metal and so you get undercut so right there and there and then up here on the quarter inch plate I have a couple little spots of undercut that might be difficult to see on the camera, but uh, just, just be aware that that's a telltale sign that you may be running too high of amperage. Now, 130 amps, uh, this was just a fireworks show here, right? Uh, I totally made a mess. I was sinking through my plate. I almost burned a hole here in, in this quarter inch plate. Now, the interesting thing to be aware of, though, is if I were running a 1 8 inch 7018 electrode, 
I probably could have run that 130 amps and been just fine. It's uh, just too hot for this 330 seconds of an inch electrode. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully this was helpful for you, and I'd recommend getting out in your shop and running a series of welds yourself. You may not go this wide of a range, but you might start to get a feel for when you're running a higher and lower amperage in a short amount of time. If you wanna learn more about the stick welding process as a whole, I've linked a full tutorial down in the description below, as well as some other videos that might help you strike an arc, uh, weld thin material, or pick the right electrode. So check those out. And if you're liking what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe below and I'll send more content your way. We'll see you next time.